hear your word, for you are revealed as we will ever be open. Keep us focused, Father. Father, we just thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You mentioned something I did, bro. You mentioned something in your prayer. It's on. I did it while you were praying. I'm sorry about that. I need to be honest. Uh, you, you mentioned something. Help us to keep focus. It's the fall. Right now you can see the dark outside and so on. And it takes a chunk of us. It takes a chunk of me to say, am I going tonight? Okay. That's what happened at the fall. And that's what will happen also mid-January. Okay. And on top of this, we had the COVID issue of gathering and stuff like this. So he said something key. Help us to keep focus here. So I would like to encourage you with the baby, baby stuff, like in the afternoon, if you have an occasion sometimes. I know that people work, but take a break a little bit. Take a deep breath and pr to rest. Have a, we call it a, a quick snap, a quick nap, a power nap type of thing. If you can just can pause a little bit and come prepared. I have to do it myself. I realize I'm not 50 anymore, that I need my energy. <laughs> at night to, to lecture, starting at 7 until 8.15, 8.30. It takes a lot, of, a lot of energy. I simply say that because it's so easy to, you know, put a log in the fireplace if you, that, if you have this and, okay, I'll go next week. And next week it rains and you miss two weeks in a row and then you drop it. Uh, let's keep the good discipline in Christ. It's, it's about our time here. There is basically not much to do on this planet. And what you learn in these things will never, ever be taken away from you. These are the truths of the Bible, not because of me, because of what we read and what we expound upon. With this, you cannot go wrong. Last week, very briefly, we talked about the leaders of Israel trusting in man. Just a few points. And the leaders of Israel, those who are, like you see uh, on the screen right now, those who are basically accused to lead the nation astray will be taken away. There will be the removal of competent, uh, those who qualify for leadership, and they will be replaced by incompetent, incompetent leaders leading to anarchy. Kids and those who have a loaf of bread will be asked to be leaders upon them. At the time of Isaiah, Jerusalem was called the spiritual Sodom. I, we are right here, dear sister, page 3 of 27. It's only a quick review. Okay? And they are condemned, the leaders of these days, they are condemned to lead the nation astray. Okay? This is very important to understand this. They are spoiling the vineyard. And the vineyard is the people of Israel. And Israel, and not Israel, but Isaiah will pick up the motif of the vineyard in chapter 5. And that's exactly where I left you last week. Now, if you look at the board with me, and if you take your outlines with me, page 3 of 27 pages, we go on point C and scroll down to point 6 right here, indictment and judgment of the Jewish women from 3.16 to 4.1. So come with me slowly, chapter 3.16 to 4.1. I'm going to read ask you to circle a few things, many things actually, 21 words that I will ask you to circle between verses basically 18 to 23. I will expound on them in a moment of time. Put your finger at the right place. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 16 to 23. 23 or 20, uh, No, verses 16 to chapter 4, verse 1. Moreover, Jehovah said, because the daughters of Zion are proud and walk with heads held high and seducti seductive eyes and go along with mincing steps and tingle the bangles on their feet, therefore the Lord will afflict the scalp of the daughters of Zion with scabs, and the Lord will make their foreheads bare. Verse 18, in that day, Jehovah will take away the beauty of their anklets, circle anklets or whatever you have in replacement of this, headbands, every word that I see right now, circle them, headbands, crescent ornaments, dangling earrings, bracelets, veils, headdresses, ankle chains, sashes, 
perfume boxes, amulets, finger rings, nose rings, festal robes, outer tunics, cloaks, money purses, and mirrors, undergarments, turbans, and veils again. Verse 24. Now it will come about that instead of sweet perfume, there will be putrefaction. Instead of a belt, a rope. Instead of a well-set hair, a plucked-out scalp. Instead of fine clothes, a donning of sackcloth. And branding instead of beauty. Your men will fall by the sword, and your mighty one in battle, and her gates will lament and mourn, and deserted she will sit on the ground. For seven women will take hold of one man in that day, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own clothes, and let us be called by your name. Take away our reproach. Let's go back to verse 6. Circle the word daughters of Jerusalem. Notice that the word daughters is in the plural. At this point, he is not talking about the population in general. But he is talking about the women of that city, the Jewish women of Jerusalem. He is not talking about the women, womanhood population per se, but the lady of that specific city, Jerusalem. In verses 16 to 17, I read it, by use of pride and haughtiness, basically, they increase their authority. By use of pride and haughtiness, they increase their level of authority. They go beyond their level of authority. What they are doing wrong here, they are the one influencing their husbands. They are the one influencing their husband, the rulers, in, in other words, to carry out the sin listed earlier. Bribes, accumulating golds, silver, and wealth. They are the one that entice the husband to accumulate stuff and so on. In verses 16 and 17 where it says, Moreover, the Lord said, Because of the daughters of Zion are proud, and walk it with heads held high and seductive eyes, and go along with mincing steps, and tingle the bangles on their feet. I will come back right away to that. In verse 16, B here, the heads, they walk with their heads held high. They stretch the neck with the nose up. They go around like this, basically displaying coquettish glances. Coquettish glances. Trusting in their beauty. Would you repeat that? Yes, trusting in their beauty. They go around with coquettish, how do you say that word, coquette? Coquettish glances to seduce, seductive eyes. You know exactly when I'm talking about the ladies and so on, we see the people and this is very, very obvious today also. They are also cent centering unnecessary attention on themselves, displaying their beauty. Tinkling the bangles on their feet. I will come back to that in a moment. Tinkling the bangles on their feet. Verse 17. Therefore the Lord will afflict the scalp of the daughters of Zion with scabs, and Jehovah will make their foreheads bare. They will be given scalp with scabs. It's going to begin to show instead of their beauty because of the punishment to come. 
They will be taken basically in captivity soon and in the future also prophetically in the Great Tribulation and by means of massive rape by the barbarians, in that case the Assyrian, they will be raped massively and they will be taken away in captivity and laid bare instead of laying in beauty. That's what will happen to the Lady of Zion. Like I said to you last, last week, I had the privilege to go to Elat and witness, wi uh, wi witness these things around the pool in a luxury resort that I stayed one, ni one, night, one night in Elat. In verse 18 to 23, I ask you to circle all the words that I did ask you to circle. You have 21 luxury items to be removed from them. I explained them briefly. Okay, so you can see that even in the time of Isaiah, there was a beauty culture was already overflowing in the prophet's day, buying expensive stuff, makeup, and so on. It was even there in the time of Job. And this is unusual of Isaiah to describe in such detail such a thing. He is the only one that does it, to describe in such detail such a thing. The luxury items. And keep in mind that this is very expensive stuff that we will see in a moment. And that's why their husband take advantage of widows and the poor people, orphans to buy these things for their wives. Their wives demands it, and that's why the honesty and the justice is distorted. They like wealth to buy stuff like this. And there will be an indictment and judgment over the Jewish women of Zion. Very expensive stuff. Ladies, you know that much. Without a blame, you know that much. Anklets. It's in the ankles, of course. They were made of gold, silver, and ivory, and they make noise. Headbands, that's the famous veil that you see sometimes in the Arab world going from one year to the other year like this with tangles here and stuff like that. That's the headbands from ear to ear. Crescent ornaments, it goes from the neck down between the breasts. That's what we call the crescent ornaments with pictures on it, made of gold also. Start square. From neck down to the crease. Dangling earrings, just make a note. Judges chapter 8, verse 26. I don't have a scriptures for all of them, but I research and for some of them, I have it. 8.26 of the book of Judges. Chapter 8, verse 26. Bracelets, it's basically something twisted. The Hebrew word that goes there, it's a bracelet made of twisted cords and so on. Veils are not the ordinary veil. They are veil, more expensive, colorful, of different material and so on. Headdresses, I have nothing to say. Ankle chains, basically they have also bracelet, but they have ankle chains like a prisoner so that they may make their step shorter. Cling, 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 cling. So there is a chain in between so that the they go like this without being, being in proper gesture so they cannot walk like this. They do mincing step type of thing. So that's the ankle chains. Sh sashes, Jeremiah 2.32. And that's exactly what I witnessed in Israel when I went. You know, baining suit that I've seen, bikinis with 
cords and gold. It's amazing, beautiful. But it need to be honest. You look at it and you say, wow, uh, probably a bikini, $1,000. I don't know. I don't have a clue about that. But perfume boxes, number 10. Amulets, number 11, to do incantations. That's why the judgment, worshipping the amulets. Number 12, finger rings, signet rings in the finger. Not necessarily pushed com completely. Could be like this or like this as well. You can see all kinds nowadays. Nose. For number 13, you can see nowadays where the nose got together. Here you have a ring there. Genesis chapter 24, verse 22. Festal robe, which is basically your best gown at night. That's exactly what Ruth, to be covered with um, Boaz here. Chapter 3, verse 15. Ruth three fifteen. This is festal robes, whatever you have in your translation. Fifteen outer tunics. Sixteen cloaks. Number seventeen, money purses, pockets, usually used by men. And mirrors, basically it's polished metal. You can see yourself. Polished rocks or metals. Undergarment, it's underwear, very fine, made of linen and so on. Number 20, turbans, it's twisted cloth. They have turbans with twisted cloth together, braided together, and veils again. So you can picture an exceeding beauty looking beautiful and this will be changed. Now in verse 24, these items will be removed. Now it will come about that instead of sweet perfume, there will be putrefa putrefaction. Instead of a belt, a rope. Instead of a well-set hair, a plucked out scalp. Instead of fine clothes, a donning sackcloth. A branding instead of beauty. Okay, I read it, no comment. Instead of sweet perfume, putrefaction, you don't need to know that, just circle your Bible. Instead of fine belts made of <laughs> twisted linen, a rope. Instead of well set hair, the Jewish ladies with curly hair and so on, they look great and so on, so, um, baldness. Instead of fine clothes, sackcloths. And instead of branding hair, there will be no beauty. Okay, so these are lessons that we can combine today. I'm not going to ask Olga not to arrange her hair and look shabby and so on. This is not the issue. The issue is that they are externally beautiful, but the inside is not there at all. Okay, so that's what's important for any human being, women and men alike. We can look good on the outside, and one of them, that French Canadian, I'm proud, you know, I, I, I like to shave and be presentable all the time, in a sense, but what counts the most for the Lord is the inner beauty, okay? You know that, no need of a speech on that, for sure. But what will hurt them the most, though, you can note that, what will hurt them the most is not necessarily the removal of the 21 articles, nor the mistreatment. What will hurt them the most, it's going to be in this time and the time to come, the reduction of the male population. Make a note, it's kind of interesting. Verses 25 to 26 and 4, one, Your men will fall by the sword, and your mighty ones in battle. And her gates will lament and mourn, and deserted she will sit on the ground. That's Jerusalem. For seven women will take hold of one man in that day, saying, We will eat of our own bread 
and wear our own clothes only. Let us be called by your name. Take away our reproach. Specifically, in the Great Tribulation, they will end up seven to one. There will be seven women for one man. In the Jewish world, you will know why I say specifically in the Great Tribulation. Even today, among the Jewish ladies, it is shameful for them not to be married. If you have a lady between 25, 20, 25, 35, never got married, you can be sure that the aunts and the parents are on their case. Why are you waiting to get married? It's very honored in Israel, of course. It's a shame not to be married. And because of the future situation... In the, gen in the great relation, with not enough men to go around, seven women will beg a man to marry them. Seven women will beg a, a man to marry them. Seven women will beg a man to marry them. And that is without asking for the man to provide the basic necessities of the law. I'll, I'll explain. I'm trying to go slow here. And that will be without requesting to provide the basic necessities demanded by the law as a man is supposed to provide. I'll give you scriptures in a moment. What they will say when the great tribulation will hit the Jewish people and the whole planet what they will say to a man, the only man available for seven, we will take care of ourselves, of our own food and our own clothing, the basic necessities. They will say things like this, just marry us and let us use your name as Mrs. Because it's important. Let alone the house, let alone the food, let alone the, 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 the clothing that you're supposed to, to provide. Just give me your last name that I may maybe call a missus. It's in Exodus chapter 21 verse 10. That we have the legal requirement what a man is supposed to provide for his lady is food and clothing and of course the shelter. But in Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1, they won't even, even expect the basic requirements to be met by the husband because of the reduced male population. How is it the pace? Good. Okay. We will see in Isaiah 54, 4, you will have a reproach for the unmarried and childless women. Unmarried, Genesis chapter 30, verse 23. For the unmarried case, Genesis chapter 30, verse 23. I'm going to read for you the Isaiah 54, 4. So that is to come for them. Fear not, for you will not be put to shame. And do not feel humiliated, for you will not be disgraced. But you will forget the shame of your youth, and the reproach of your widowhood, you will remember no more. So, Isaiah will come back to us in a moment of time. The only thing that I would like you to, to, to keep in mind, that in the Assyrian captivity, it's going to happen to them also. They will go there, they will be raped, walk naked, and so on. These are things that we have seen also in the time of the Holocaust, when walking, when they arrive at the camp, they were inspected by mail and so on. Uh, in the nude and so forth. And in the time of the Great Tribulation, the male population will be reduced tremendously for the Jews. And they will be willing to marry, of course, not going to be a good time to marry, but uh, there will not be enough men around. Just the indictment and judgment of the Jewish women with pride and so on. There will be tremendous humiliation at that time. Now make a note. I'm going to make my best to slow down a bit. 
Isaiah, in the last few weeks, started out with the Messianic age. Isaiah, in chapter 2, verses 2, 3, and 4, which is past for us. Look at your outlines if you want to. We, at the top, Jerusalem Purge, at the top of your page here, page 3. Isaiah started with the Messianic age, where everything is splendid and glorious. We have seen that. And I have shown you a slide like this. What the land will be. Okay? That's the messianic age. In that time, everything is splendid and beautiful. Gave you the wrong dimension here. Do you remember, Fred? But the land will move into the sea. Different setting. Huge plateau. That's the temple number four. So I just want to express to you, and I will produce that. My wife is sick. I didn't have time to do everything by myself this week. Okay, demanding ministry. we thank God that I have my wife to help me out, but now she's uh, knocked down a bit. So uh, he started out this way, then he contrasted with Israel's present condition. The leaders of last week. Okay, are you with me? It's not difficult. And the Ida indictment against the leaders. You have this: the day of Jehovah. Number four. Look at my finger. Indictment and judgment of the leaders last week. Indictment of the judge, judgment of Jewish lady. Now, in chapter 4, verses 2 to 6, he goes back to the Messianic kingdom. Okay? So that's why now he goes back to the Messianic kingdom. So that's why now we move on page 3 of your outline, the Messianic age, chapter 4, verse 2. Okay? The verse 1 belongs basically in the Hebrew... 40, uh, chapter 4, verse 1, is verse 27, chapter 3 in the Hebrew. Are you with me? Yes. So Isaiah began a few weeks ago and last week with the Messianic age when everything is beautiful. Went back to his time, witnessing what he saw with the ladies and also from a prophetic view. And now he goes back to the Messianic age. Arabic number 1 on this, the Messianic person. You will like that. Come with me. In that day, the branch of Jehovah, circle branch of Jehovah, will be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth will be the pride and the adornment of the survivors of Israel. Circle the survivors of Israel. This is point number one on your outline. Circle the branch of Jehovah. Now I say I bring a new concept here, the branch doctrine or the branch concept. Who is the branch? Jesus the Messiah. He is the branch. I say now they will develop the branch concept. That's the messianic person. The branch is the shoot. S-H-O-O-T of Jehovah. And because the branch, the Messiah, is the shoot of Jehovah, which we will see later, it does emphasize his divine nature. Beautiful study that you are doing right now. Because the branch is attached to the tree, and the branch is the shoot of Jehovah, the emphasis of being the branch, capital B, shows the deity of your Messiah. And for you to sit on a chair and be saved, your Jesus Christ has to be God. Not a fraction of a second less than God. Do you understand this? It's important for your salvation. Okay? He never left aside his deity when he came to mind, when he came to earth. He never laid aside his deity. If he would have done that 1%, he would no longer be equal to Jehovah. Okay? He never laid aside his deity, the kenosis. It is of crucial importance. Okay? It's to be detailed. The branch doctrine will be detailed in chapter 11 of his book. So once again, I encourage you to read Isaiah twice in your favorite Bible, in your own language. Okay? In verse 2, once again, everything will be beautiful and glorious. Beautiful and glorious, and the fruits of the earth will be the pride and the adornment of the survivors of Israel. 
circle the survivors of Israel. Who has the word escape? Good. What do you use? The New King James? Yeah. Good. Uh, Perfect. The New King James, beautiful. I like it. That's why I went survivor or escape of Israel. This is the remnant. The survivor, the escape, the remnant, that's the same thing. I use all the time the word remnant, but here, that's the remnant of Israel. So the reference here is the remnant of Israel. Slash escape. Slash survivors. All the same thing. Okay? And the reference in that day, the branch will be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth will be the pride and the adornment of the survivors of Israel. It's nowhere to be seen. He's talking about that era. So these are the Jews who will survive the great tribulation. Make a note if you are also doing revelation with us. These are the Jews who will survive the seven years of the great tribulation. And there will be only one third of the Jewish people existing in these days to come that will survive. Two third will die. So that's why a big reduction of the male population. Okay. This is the one-third that will enter the Messianic kingdom after their survival when they will ask the Messiah to come back. Make a note. I will read something for you. Zechariah chapter 13, verses 8 and 9. Listen closely. Zechariah chapter 13, verses 8 and 9. It will come about in all the land, declares Jehovah, Two parts in it will be cut off and perish. It's two-third. But the third will be left in it. And I will bring the third part through the fire, refine them as this silver is refined, and test them as gold is tested. They will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say they are my people and they will say Jehovah is my Elohim. So that's the survivor that are right there, the survival of Israel, the escape of Israel, those who will hide in Basra. Now is in the future again, Isaiah. That's why sometimes I say it's difficult to follow because he's not saying, now I'm going back to the future. He's not saying, he goes and that's the context that determines what he says. Based upon what he sees while he is in the Valley of Enom, Keep in mind that this is an Old Testament prophet that prophesied in the old city of Jerusalem. He is not in the Galilee right now, and he is not in Lebanon, and he is not in Elat. Okay? He witnessed what you have seen often, the western wall, the valley of Enom, the Kindron Valley. So that's what he sees. But what he speaks right now, there is, when he says, In that day the branch of the Lord will be glorified and glorious, and the fruit of the earth and the bride and survival, this is something that is only true of the future time for Israel. Are you with me? Yes. Good. Yes. The uh, two-thirds that, are, that perish, are they damned? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, no, not necessarily. No, 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 not necessarily. Some will die in unbelief. That's what we call the tribulation saints. That's it. it is, some will die in belief. That's it. If I said on belief, it's wrong. It doesn't make sense. That, because the, 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 there will be so much death at that time. Some will believe. Some won't. Okay? okay? Some won't make it. But the remnant of Israel, these are going to be saved at the end. And these are the people that will ask the Lord to come back. Matthew chapter 23, verse 39. You will not see me until you say... Say, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Blessed be, be the Lord. Uh, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Okay, good stuff. I'm glad we do good. That was the exposition that I just did right now. It was the Messianic person, capital P, put the Messiah, the branch, on your notes if you want to. Now we talk about the Messianic people. Three and four, come. It will come about in that uh, it will come about that he is left in Zion and remains in Jerusalem will be called holy circle be called holy 
everyone who is recorded for life in Jerusalem. When the Lord has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, you see, and purged the bloodshed of Jerusalem for, for, from her midst by the spirit of judgment and the spirit of burning. Circle twice, spirit, spirit. Okay, this is the messianic people right now. Two things that I have to say about them. First, in verse 3, those who escape, the survival, the remnant, and so on, okay, that's, they will be characterized by holiness, salvation. You are holy. It's basically set apart. Always on the point one, earlier the people were characterized by gross sins. Now, the remnant, the escaped, the survivors, will be characterized by low holiness. And then when it says, everyone who is recorded for life in Jerusalem, make a note apart, that's a reference to what we call the book of life, of, Re of Revelation. The big, big, big uh, telephone book where containing all the, the names of the people that were ever born from Adam on word. That's the book of life. Second thing about the Messianic people. Let's talk about the cause of their holiness in verse 4. What's the cause of it? It's the washing of the Jewish women. And that is in answer to the problem of 316 to 41. This. Okay? There will be a purging, and now the woman will still be pretty, but not put their confidence in their dandlings and chains and ankles and so on, but their confidence in God. There's nothing, God has nothing about against beauty. Job, when he received his daughters, seven daughters and so on, he named them, they were exceeding beauty. They were beautiful ladies at that time. One of them in the book of Job is called Karen Apouch. Karen Apouch or Apouch, and it means eyes of horn paint. Do you know what was the makeup in the time of Job? Of Job, they were taking a horn of an animal, a ram type of thing. They were putting clay, very dark clay with water in it, and they were taking a little paintbrush and they were enla enlarging their eyes here, as you know. And she was named this way because they were perfect beauty. Okay? So, ladies are beautiful, and it's okay. But we need two beautifulness in ladies and in men also. It's an inward beauty and an outward beauty. Simple as this. Simple as this. All right. So, and that's the cause, the washing of the Jewish ladies. That's the answer of the problem of what we have studied tonight in the first part. And now Jerusalem will be purged. Dealing with the problems of chapter 3. And the means of it is the Holy Spirit. Don't be offended by spirit, spirit, lowercase s. It's because it's not spirit of God there. It's spirit of judgment and the spirit of burning, but that's a reference to the Holy Spirit. Is it the purging of Jerusalem or Israel? That's the, one and the same in that context. Beautiful. We pause for a quick washroom break. We are doing well. Look at, well, look at this. <laughs>